favorite thing to do. I just love to sit up here and tune and tune. I have a device down here, which, you know, you will buy. It's not because you can't get in tune. You can do that, but you might be in tune uh, above pitch. But generally, uh, things go sharp in the course of the night, including the axe. And, 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 you know, so you'll hit a vocal, and it'll be just about five cents away from where you can still survive. Blow the top of your head off, it's never an attractive sight, it's not good so business. But these tuners, man, you know, not a doubt in their mind, not a doubt in their mind. You never agree with them, but you've given up hope in all that you know, yourself. And there's something weird about sound, but it's, I mean, these places really are, I mean, the stage is tilted like this, and the sound is going over, over there. <laughs> Speakers are pointed that way, or if it's a line or it's a digital process where everything reaches the people at the same time, I don't know how they do that. I do know what it sounds like back here, though, which is nuts. I mean, it's like, it's like somebody removed all of the, you know, essential organs from the person you're talking to, and they're still standing there. I mean, I mean, what's wrong with you? You know, why are you cowering? So you can imagine trying to tune up here without, you know, so you resort to one of these things. And that's how the Third Reich got started. Actually. <laughs> you do it. I, don't, I can't fix it. Okay. I'd love to do yeah. it. It's always a privilege to play. I don't care where you're playing. Uh, I've played an abattoir in Paris, played it twice. I mean, it's either me or the hanging meat. Uh, they'd remove the meat for, for the show. <laughs> uh, but uh, the Concert Cabal, you know, it's historic, it sounds beautiful, it looks wonderful. It's Dutch, and uh, I was playing that. I I brought for an opening act because because uh, Leon had never toured there. I brought uh, Leon Redbone along and and his tuba player, and we we all were a little you know maybe slightly concerned about how that would go over in, in Deutschland. But when they saw the tuba walk, and Leon would play about three tunes and then bring the tuba out, and they just cracked up and they dug it they dug it in, in the concert cabal in holland i discovered that that there are such things as tuba groupies five of them in, in uh, amsterdam they came backstage fought their way back there to get their hands on on jonathan it's not, you know, it's not a common occurrence, really. <laughs> Drummers, you know, well, the usual thing. This tuba player, the stage fright is another thing that I, I'm surprised any tuba player would have, but, but uh, John, Jonathan would have had it. And like a lot of people with that affliction, he had a little ritual that would just dissipate all of it. And he'd walk on every night. 
just fine. And that ritual was to gag. If he, if he could just gag a couple times, he, that'd be it. He'd just calm right down. <laughs> I'm going to knock it out of the park with my, with my tuba. And uh, by the way, when I was a trombone player, I worked in Oklahoma. Well, I, worked, I was going to school. I was, I was in the stu uh, Yeah. And our band leader, Lowell Lehman, the, the great Lowell Lehman, uh, if, you, if you acted up too much, he'd take your instrument away from you and consign you to the tuba. The tuba in the marching band of West Junior High and uh, Central High, uh, regular high school, was a punishment instrument. <laughs> if you're just a real jerk, you, that's where you live, is with the tuba. <laughs> How would the tuba feel about that? <laughs> So John carried a, carried his own spoon around with him, and when we saw the spoon, we'd either leave the dressing room or he would. And he would prepare prepare himself for um, for the stage, and it worked every night. But if he actually if he got too a little too enthusiastic and actually threw up, then he, he <laughs> wouldn't work. <laughs> I don't have that affliction. I, what I do is I get depressed. I get really depressed before I go on. And then the minute you set foot on the stage, it just poof, it's gone. I don't know what that's about. I suppose it's a version of stage fright. Matter of fact, if I walk on stage feeling great, it's not going to be a very good night. <laughs> it's a weird exercise to try and get depressed when you aren't. I've done it. Oh, the weather depressed. So, uh, it's this the weather Fairmont tuba, tuba player named uh, Bert Kaffer. He had several giant worldwide hits. He had a gift for for a, a hook. But the kind of hook you were happy to have, you know, I'm like, yummy, 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 I've got love in my tummy. Don't want that in your head. <laughs> now it's stuck in your head. I think you might have heard this before. tell you how to get rid of it. Maybe I should play something. <coughs> Am I having a better time than you are? <laughs> I gotta tell you, this is, this is how you get rid of something in your head. I, I got that. I, I was uh, playing a job with uh, David, one of my favorite, favorite musicians. David Lindley, we were in Bozeman, played the night, the next morning I walked out 